Welcome back to Die Cash Cars. So today we got a good one. You're gonna wanna see this because we're not talking dollar cars. We're not talking premiums. We're not talking treasure hunts. Not talking RLC. We're talking convention. I mean, this is cream of the crop. You know, these are the growl pieces that you work your whole entire collection to acquire. So I know my channel is pretty fresh, but I'm coming at you guys from the top. So this is the 2022 Japan Convention model car, the car of the event. It's the Datsun 510 Bluebird. Production wise, it's out of 5100. So I believe how that is split up. It is 3500 are right facing like this. And then 1600 is the limited production run of the left facing like I have in the background there. So these cars could only be purchased at the event on one day of the event. Uh, and then just reading the convention website, it sounded like you were limited one per person, or I guess one package per person, but you could get into line three times, right? <laughs> kind of funny, but, um, and I guess the package formats that you could purchase, you know, once you got up to the, the table, um, you could either buy just the right facing for about $48. So I think it was like 5,500 yen, or you could buy the left and the right for about $100 or you could buy two rights and one left for 150 but you could never just buy the left by itself so I guess that's how you know that's how they make sure that it stays exclusive and you're not paying any less for the left side unfortunately I did not attend a convention I wish I did I'd love to go to Japan definitely on my bucket list but I purchased these on eBay, so I got these a day after the convention, um, the first batch essentially that was put on there. I got this one for $860 free ship, but after taxes everything came out to about $900 for the pair. So at the time I felt like that was fair given that the left facing was selling for about $600, the right facing was selling for about $400, so you figure if you're buying them individually, you're already spending $1,000. So made more sense to just buy both of them uh, at a hundred dollar discount i guess an added bonus that my seller threw into was just the convention stickers too so um you know pretty happy to have these i don't think i'll actually take them off or anything like that but just neat that they were thrown in there extra so the one thing i will say about buying cars off ebay international especially is just make sure you're double checking the seller feedback um obviously you want to buy from sellers that have as close to 100 percent feedback as possible so the individual that i purchased from i think there were about 99.6 so pretty good feedback the other thing i do check too is just make sure that the other items that they're selling are comparable so make sure that they're collector items if they're selling hot wheels even better that way they know how to package them and ship them out i will warn you guys that while i was looking for this i did find a number of sellers essentially first time sellers, um, you know, posting up these cars, you know, prices were, you know, comparable at the 800 to $900 range. Um, I'm sure I passed over on a couple cheaper options as well too. But again, I, you know, you always want that peace of mind going to more trusted sellers than the, the cheaper sellers that might have great feedback or might not have experience shipping higher end collectibles, especially internationally. So why did I go with buying the pair versus just buying an individual car? I mean, they are essentially the same car, whether you buy the left or you buy the right. Um, I was looking at it from a number of different aspects. So the first one was, I definitely wanted this to be an investment piece in my collection. So to buy it at one price and over the next couple of years, see it go up in value. Um, that's always the fun part of the hobby. If you look at a lot of the other 510 con con convention cars from LA, they've all hit astronomical prices in the secondary market. So I don't think this one's gonna be any different from those. I think this is definitely gonna appreciate in value, uh, especially the way it looks, the art, the graphics. I mean, it's so one-off that I definitely think um, it's gonna appreciate in value. Um, so that was one aspect. The second aspect was just the collector in me. I definitely wanted to just enjoy one, um, you know, to see the graphics and all the different features um, it has an opening hood feature. This cast does, but obviously the blister doesn't allow the, the hood to be open. So it just leaves you wanting from a collector standpoint. So with that being said, we are going to open one of these up today. 
So looking on YouTube, there's only one other channel that has this car that's opened it. You probably know who he is, Lamley Group. I couldn't let him be the only one. I definitely wanted one for myself to open it up and just take in all the details for this car. The only difference is I paid for my cars. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to just rip the blister off the pack. You guys probably seen it the whole video. I got an X-Acto knife here and I got my microfiber gloves to handle the car here. So in the next segment, that's what we'll be doing is we'll be opening up one of these. One thing I will point out my rule of thumb with opening up cars is if I'm going over a $200 threshold, that's a white glove affair. I gotta pull out my microfiber gloves because I've seen on RLC cars, especially with the Spectrofame plaint, I mean, if you're gonna touch one of these cars, your fingerprint could just be embedded into that paint forever. I mean, there's not enough polishing to even get it out. So let's get this bad boy open. Um, so I guess the plan of attack here, right, is I'm just gonna cut along the bottom end of the blister here. Oh man, what am I doing? Shoot, this is the left side, guys, or the left facing. Can't open this one, right? So we gotta open the right side. I'm just playing. Just a little pump fake, guys. I I knew I was going to open the right side. I wasn't going to open up the left one there. But uh, yeah, again, plan of attack here. Going to open up this blister. Just kind of scaling the base here right by the card. Um, my plan is to leave the top adhered so that I can leave it as a hinge and still put the car back in. Um, you know, if I really wanted to, right? And as you can see, I got my turntable set up as well, too. So once we get it out, I'll let it spin a little bit for you guys to just take a look at it. So here goes nothing. Anybody else nervous? It's only $350. All right, so we'll start on the left side here. So let me just double check again, right? Because this is the right facing. So the right facing goes from, the numbers on it go from one all the way through to 3,500. So yeah, I think this is definitely the right one. All right, moment of silence, guys. There it is, no, no turning back. So while I'm doing this, I mean, I'll talk a little bit about the value too, I mean. <clears throat> so again, right now, market value is $350 for this right facing. Um, you figure if I open it, you know, what's the value of this car gonna be? I mean, I guess from what I've seen, right, values typically go down about, I would say about $100, right, give or take. I mean, there are some exceptions to that, but, you know, I'm just thinking about like convention, RLS, convention R34, right, the yellow one. Um, that was another convention car that I actually had. And, you know, I bought it on pre-order off eBay after I got it in, I opened it immediately because I, I definitely wanted to open it up and to match the, uh, you know, at the time I had the blue one that was loose and I had a purple one that was loose as well too. So, uh, you know, when I got that in, it was a no brainer. I had to open it too, but I know that one, you know, at, you know, after some time I realized that it had gone up to $200 carded. Uh, so loose, I was looking at about a hundred. So um that's kind of what i'm basing this off of you know once this is loose i mean 350 dollars carded i'm thinking it'll be about maybe 200 to 250. but again i mean this car in particular you know it's gonna be a pc car this is gonna be pretty much my car from here on out um i don't really see why i would try to sell this one just again know such a great piece you know it's gonna stay in my collection for a while here all right so these corners so there is an inner plastic piece that's why I'm not able to cut all the way through I'm not just slow at cutting guys and I'm trying to preserve the car here I don't want to get too close because I don't want to even scar it up here uh, uh, no wonder Lamley group just ripped it off that would have been the quicker way to do it here but again it's an expensive piece so you guys can uh 
couldn't understand why I'm taking all the precautions here. All right, so I think we got it. I think it's all loose here. I think I might got one corner here that's still sticking. that'll do it cool all right so I'm gonna take it out so this is kind of nice so again I don't want to have to touch this with my bare hands what I'm doing right now is I'm just gripping onto the plastic uh, behind the car and I'm using that to grip it out so there it is it is out so uh, 5100 of these one of them is gone so you guys are you guys are down to 5099 that are carded unless somebody else opened theirs as well too so let me get my white gloves on here so i can handle it throw it on the turntable for you guys oh man that is an awesome piece guys that's just awesome Let's actually, let's go straight for the hood here. Get this open. So it's sticking a little bit here. Hopefully I don't ruin anything. Yeah, that is, that is on there. It's not wanting to open. I'm wondering if I just got to get into the right angle to get the hood to go up. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of pressure. Might be a model where I just leave the hood open. <laughs> Might never go back down. All right, there we are. All right, let's get the turntable going here. All right, guys, it is out. It is on the turntable. We got the hood open. So let me just start off by going through some of the design cues that I think make this car really one off. All right, so first off, I mean, the most notable feature is the waves on the side. So. The artist for this car, is his name here, uh, Toshikazu Nazaka. Uh, so I did a little bit of research on this guy. Looks like he's pretty famous around Japan and he's really known for skateboarding. Looks like he did a lot of um, album art for a number of bands. I'm not sure just within Japan or, or what, but he's got a really unique style where he goes and does a lot of the old school Japanese art. Uh, I believe they call it like a calligraphy form of, of painting uh, with pens and pencils, but then he's put his own modern take on things, right? Um, the wave itself is very reminiscent of the famous <clears throat> traditional art uh, in Japan. So the, uh, the great wave is what they call it. So I don't have the full picture, but I do have this model here. This is a Jada Option D 300 ZX that actually has it painted on the hood so this was a big reason why i bought this cast as well too is just because of this graphic on the the hood again just paying homage to the japanese culture right but um you know the deco on this 510 it's very reminiscent of that but again with like a modern vibe to it right so he really brings it alive with um all his different aspects and shadow work um, so really liking that you can see the difference between the left facing and right facing the wave is a lot bigger on the left facing the other design cues that you do get you know left versus right i mean you get the mattel logo on the right facing and the yokohama logo the branding there uh kind of towards the the bottom rocket panels i know this is a convention car and typically convention cars call out the the convention the date the time they didn't do that with this one and i think i think that actually works for this model on a couple of levels right i, I just feel like that adds a, a certain level of subtlety to the car um you know which basically means you could put this car up against anything else and you would never know it's a convention car but i feel like that yokohama graphic on the side there does pay homage to where the convention took place which is in yokohama japan so again very subtle cue there the other really neat aspect of this car that i like is the pinstriping down the the top of the car so typically i wouldn't like that that's really not my style but 
it really works here uh, if you look really closely at the car you can see that inside of the pinstriping here or the racing stripes there is a uh, fish scales or I think more accurately put I think these are koi scales um, again if you look at some of the artist's paintings right he he does a number of um, you know a lot of water art and he does have one with the koi fish and I think there's like a integrated skull and all that right so the koi scales really match up to the graphic that he did uh, on some of his own personal art Another neat thing that I really like about this car is that they use the Watanabe wheels. So there's only two wheel choices that really work well with the 510, right? So the Watanabe wheels, um, you know, you've seen it on the 510 Wagon Super. And then the only other wheel set that I think looks good on the 510, whether it's the wagon or the coupe, is the four spoke. Uh, they they kind of remind me of Wick work equip wheels um, but the four spoke wheels i think those are the only two wheel choices that really work with this car so i'm glad that they went with this uh, i know some folks are calling this a gunmetal color I, there is like a light hint of green to it and i've seen this on other real riders in the past as well too they try to achieve that black look but i think within the uh, production process you know what happens with this black resin is that once they they cure it it, it kind of just naturally has this green hue to it right but honestly i think it works i mean it adds character to the car if i could name a couple of things that i feel like they could have improved on with this cast i mean it is a convention car so i felt like they could have did a little bit more with the interior i know a lot of the convent the rlc cars today <clears throat> do come with a lot of detailed interior so i kind of wish they did that Obviously, the engine bay, it's all silver. I mean, it looks good. You know, a lot of show cars, right? Interior or engine bays are usually just chromed out, but I wish they put a little more detail in there. You know, some black to showcase the wires or, you know, could have just painted the engine bay cover. Um, and then the third thing that kind of gets to me is the headlights, right? So kind of wish they put some more shading on it just to give that added depth. I think would have really made the car pop, but small details I, I feel like uh overall it still looks really good um you know to be perfectly honest too i'm not a loose collector i don't open a lot of cars and the reason being is i just never get that premium feel when the car is in my hand um so i've opened a number of super treasure hunts and i've sold all those super treasure hunts that i've opened because because of the plastic base, the cars are very light and they feel cheap in your hands, even though they're super treasure hunts. Um, but this, I mean, with the, with the metal base, metal body, the added feature, I think the weight is what makes this car feel so good and definitely a car that you can appreciate more open than on card. Man, so I don't think I need to do any more talking. I think I will let you guys have a look at this car. I've given you all my experiences on how I obtained this car. I'm sure a lot of you are having the same struggles and determining which one you want to buy. You know, sometimes you think the decision is easy, but obviously it's not always easy on your, uh, your wallet, right? So um, good luck with that. Hopefully I helped you make that decision just a little bit. Uh, the last minute of this video, I think I'll just let it turn on the, uh, the table here. You guys can get a better look at it. I'll try to zoom in on some of the cool features that I'm seeing as well, too. So appreciate the view. Uh, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the car. Let me know if you think I just overpaid and I probably should have waited. And that's probably the truth, but I am perfectly happy having this car sooner rather than later. So that's all I got. Again, appreciate you guys being here. Tune in next time on Diecast Cars.